Welcome back friends to another weekly video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to survive office politics. I'm making this video today, especially for millennials. So for you millennials out there, I know I'm going to get some angry comments about this down below, but I've got to be brutally honest with you guys. In my experience, millennials tend to be really bad at dealing with office politics. It's almost like they don't understand what's going on. <laughs> and I think there's two main reasons for this. First, they've spent so much time behind a computer screen that they don't have as much practice dealing with face-to-face -face confrontations. But second, and this is the more important thing, no one's ever told them how to deal with office politics. There's no class in business school on office politics. And so we're going to be breaking it down for you today in this video. So let's start with the big complaint here. You're going to hear people complain at work about office politics, and their complaints are usually linked to an argument about fairness. So someone at your work might have gotten a raise or a promotion because they're friends with the boss. And so people blame office politics. But one thing you should keep in mind, complaining is never a productive activity. So if you're frustrated with office politics, what you should do is take a step back and try to figure out how office politics works. Because I'm telling you right now, office politics is a part of business. So if you want to be in the business world, you're going to have to figure this out. So let me explain to you how office politics works. Every business is going to have a performance evaluation process. And this is the process that bosses use to determine raises, promotions, and other benefits. Now, every business is going to have a little bit different process because different businesses value different things. But every business's process is going to basically fall into three main categories. Seniority, performance, and likability. Seniority describes how long you've been at your job. So a person with 20 years of experience is more valuable than someone with only one year of experience. Performance describes how good you are at your job. So even if you've only been at your job for a year, you might be a superstar at delivering results. That would give you a good rating on performance. Likeability describes emotional intelligence. And this talks about how well you interact with other people on your team. So do your teammates like you? Because if your teammates don't like you, I don't care how good you are at your job, you're not going to get a promotion. Office politics is this third category of likability. So do your teammates like you? It's really that simple. Now, most people understand the first two categories of seniority and performance because these are easily to define as numerical metrics. But you can't really put a number on likability because it's this fluffy category about human relationships. But my message here today is that office politics doesn't have to be confusing. It's really very simple. Are you likable? And you can ask yourself these questions. Are you respectful? Are you nice? Are you honest? Do you follow through on your word? Are you careful with other people's emotions? Are you understanding? So I'm going to try and be as specific as possible here. You need to get to know your coworkers, and you also need to let your coworkers know a little bit about you. So if your office holds an office gathering or a networking event, you need to be there and go talk to people. Find out what's happening in people's lives. You can't come into work and ignore your coworkers and expect to be part of a high-functioning team. It doesn't work that way. You're part of a community. Likeability is very important. In fact, out of the three categories you're going to be judged on, I would say that likeability is the most important. Because if you're at work and you're fighting with people and you're swearing at people and you're making other people feel uncomfortable, you're not going to get very far in your career. It's just not going to happen. And I have to tell you guys, from my own experience in corporate America, the people I have seen who rise up the corporate ladder are very likable people. 
In fact, they may not even be the highest performing people, but they rate very high in likability. There is one thing that you need to be cautious about here. So I am not saying that you should be a pushover. I never advocate that you should do things just to get people to like you, because that's bad too. So it's really this balancing act on being able to stand up for yourself, but also do it in a way that makes you likable. So I want to make one last point here. It doesn't really matter how good you are at office politics. Sometimes you're going to win and sometimes you're going to lose. That's just life. So sometimes people are going to stand up and support you and it's going to feel great. And sometimes they're going to stab you in the back. It's just going to happen. And so I'd encourage you not to get caught up in it because instead you can focus on what you can control, which is your own likability. Because in the long term, you're going to be surprised at what a difference it makes. Now I want to hear from you. If you've ever experienced office politics, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, if you found it helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The best way to supercharge a business is through accounting and corporate finance. And I release a new video every week. So come back and check out next week's video.